We have started to record the most recent session of SPCH 1113, Introduction to Public Speaking for the first summer session. We are recording a little later today due to computer updates. It is Tuesday, June 14th, 2022. Today is listed as persuasive speech topic selection as the persuasive speeches begin tomorrow with day one and on Thursday with day two. Please make certain that all of that data gets to my Yahoo email address on time. As you're well aware, the term is going to end in nine days, Thursday of next week. It's important that all of you stay up to date with giving me projects. If any of you have issues with connectivity, always check your sent email file to make certain that you have sent me the proper material, whether it be Loom or a link to YouTube. We're coming along quite nicely, like I said at the end of class on yesterday, but now let's make certain that we finish strong. I have a number of interesting persuasive speech videos to show you. We'll also be looking at outlines, audio, and video topics from years gone by. But a reminder that among all of the different areas that you can conduct research, one with a link available on my syllabus is my website. And that's where we're going to go first. From this location, you scroll almost to the bottom, and you'll find SPCH 1113. A lot of the information is going to be of great help to you as you prepare persuasive speeches for this week and wildcard speeches for the final week. Here we are. All of the material is available for you to access in a relatively expeditious fashion. The first outline that you're looking at when you scroll in the window at the website is going to be animal abuse under persuasive speaking. So you just continue to scroll through the presentations until you get to here. The last informative speech is located here. The persuasive speech right next to the informative speech on former President William Henry Harrison, animal abuse. These are dozens of outlines only. And eventually we will get into audio and video presentations before we bump into alphabetically the wild card. And some of these you'll recognize from yesterday. Procrastination, talk to people about your problems, co-parenting, and also the presentation on why it's important to take care of any kind of health issues with your dog. All of these icons are also available on Google Drive, which is what I am going to look at and what we're going to be going to next. From this location, I take data and upload it to my website. So all of these items we've looked at before, the syllabus, the checklist, course examples of speech videos from spring 2020, YouTube links, right when the pandemic had made us leave campus, the course itinerary, the course speech schedule. Let's scroll down to the first persuasive speech. Probably at some time during the month of July, I will take representative examples of either outlines or audios or videos that you have produced and put on my website, not everything, but as you can see, starting right here, animal abuse, some of the topics that have been done in the past among many hundreds and hundreds of items in interactive classrooms, which would involve PowerPoints or Google Slides primarily include animal cruelty, attending a public school, awareness of Alzheimer's, breast cancer prevention, Comic books are not just for kids. Cupping therapy, that's not for the faint of heart. 
that is something that an international student showed in class, trying to persuade individuals that for certain health maladies, cupping therapy would work, but the visuals are quite striking. Do tattoos change a person's character? Drinking and driving, getting involved with community service, helping others, illegal drugs, importance of medical IDs, in fashion or bad fashion, not all persuasive topics have to be serious. An international student from Saudi Arabia wanted to talk about misconceptions about Muslims today. An international student from China wanted to talk about the one child policy, which since the time he gave his presentation has been changed. Online education as an effective educational method, we'll come back to that. Pet adoption, notice the graphic on the title slide, please adopt to me, very persuasive. Pit bull ownership, from a pit bull owner. Prevent school violence, and that was 2011. Restorative plastic surgery. Think about Doctors Without Borders, some of the things that the organization provides, such as assisting children around the world with cleft lip and palate, going green on campus, SAU students becoming involved in organizational projects for recycling, staying in shape, stop bullying, the importance of sunscreen, the importance of the arts or teaching humanities in schools, the land of plenty, persuading people that they were wasting too much food, too much produce, tipping servers. Any of you who have worked in the service industry know that well. Some people tip some don't, to save a life, childhood leukemia, traveling with Airbnb from the same student who gave an informative speech on Totterstan, and we looked at her outline, from the same student who gave us the demonstrative speech on making kvass, K-V-A-S, which was the Russian liquor or very low calorie and low alcohol beer. Understanding schizophrenia, an international student wanted to talk about the relevance of a vegetarian diet. Violent video games and children. The importance of voting. Wear a motorcycle helmet. Winter is always better from someone who gave that presentation in the midst of the summer nine years ago. And then we get into audio and video presentations, which we will eventually look at in terms of topic selection. But here, let's examine a persuasive outline that was delivered in class. This is called online education as an effective educational method. She was one of two classmates from the same country in the Middle East who were learning conversational English and did a really nice job. This was their presentation, online education as an effective educational method. So she's looking at that topic to persuade individuals that online education works. It probably depends upon the course, the instructor, the methodology, but I do like the topic. Let's focus for just a minute on the design consistency of her slides. It's very well put together. An effective title, we know who the student is, you don't have to put buy on it, but that's okay. The course, the year it was offered, the time, because it was face-to-face -face in Over Street Hall, room 304. But there is design consistency with the color, the format, the font size, the font color. We don't have to guess in terms of the topic. We don't have to guess in terms of the name. This is something that all of you have to work on in this class. Let's know who you are and what your topic is. You don't necessarily have to put persuasive speech on the title slide. But if this were being used as a loom presentation, where would the student place her webcam? Probably in this case, in this format, bottom left. But all of you need to consider with an online speech course, 
where are you going to place your webcam and how can you adjust your text accordingly? From a persuasive standpoint, what is electronic education? Distance learning designed to be carried out remotely by using electronic communication. This was seven years ago during the summer. The truth about electronic learning, education change, education and learning is evolving with the help of computers and online technology. New ways of learning are now available. People all around the world are experiencing improvements in many fields as a result of the quality that online learning provides. Many universities and colleges may not survive by the end of this decade. And we've seen, even though it's not an exact analogy, that Henderson State University is having major problems, primarily because of financial mismanagement, but other universities, especially with a pandemic, have had to take a lot of courses and move them online to work against different types of universities, such as Southern New Hampshire University, or the University of Phoenix, or many larger universities that have an imprint nationally, such as Purdue University with its global worldwide campus. You have to really be very proactive because the tuition from off-campus learning is going to be just as relevant as learning on campus. And there are some people, because of their jobs, because of their circumstances, can't necessarily come to campus. And that's why online education is taking on more relevancy. What are the facts? Many academic institutions adopt online learning technologies and remote access learning. Distance education is a great achievement of our time. Online learning will be available to a much larger number of people with the internet having the greatest impact. And we're still with online education 1.0 or 2.0. Imagine by the time your kids get to college, what will online education look like? What will it sound like? What will hybrid education look like? Because as you're well aware, during the pandemic, not only were individuals being taught in the classroom live, but many individuals, myself included, taught exclusively, like I am during the summer, from home. How is it going to evolve? And how will online education be relevant in the future? The digital learning boom, you can see this is a screenshot that has been incorporated into the slides. This text image balance is quite helpful because whenever you're thinking about filling the time, you've got underneath the headline, digital learning boom from the screenshot. One, two, three, four, five, six different elements on which the student can discuss. And she can pick and choose, the young lady who gave the speech, she can look at how from 1990 until the time she gave the speech, which in the upper left-hand corner is 2015, how it has evolved. Now think about how online education has evolved today with the improvements as we're looking at right now with Blackboard, because I'm teaching this course to a great degree the same way that I would that if I were face-to-face. -face. Basically, in this case, making it like a television program. But with online education, many of you know the challenges. And this is why persuading people about the importance of online education, as she is doing, is an excellent topic for a speech. With the one problem that you face if you're a professor, how can you guard the academic integrity of an online course. One in five students as of 2007 was taking an online course. Many of you grew up with this, so you feel more comfortable with online templates. As of the time she gave the speech, nearly one in three college students were taking an online course, and I'm guessing that percentage has obviously gone up a great deal. Not only because of the pandemic, many students prefer online instruction. And then you have an e-learning blended mode. As I indicated a moment ago, many professors at SAU and around the country were not only teaching online, but also had, especially during the pandemic, live streaming of their courses from the classroom. And that would be the blended mode of e-learning. As you can see from the three bullet points on the left-hand side, Chalk and board, as long ruled the classroom, will not be eliminated. Of course, now it's whiteboard, but less emphasis. Depends upon where you are. 
A lot of the graduate programs are going to include online instruction in the curriculum. Traditional and e-learning approaches, classroom, content, personalization. So she's got the opportunity in the traditional classroom or e-learning to take as much or as little time as she wants to pick and choose whatever she thinks is important. Whether it be PowerPoint, textbook library under traditional classroom, or multimedia simulation and digital library on the right. How will the delivery mode change in time? She's got 12 slides. Her style of speaking obviously was a little bit quicker, which is why she decided to have more slides rather than fewer. But it gives you the opportunity with more slides to, again, pick and choose and speak somewhat faster with the pacing, depending upon what you think is relevant and how you want to persuade the audience. Growing student population, increase in tuition fee, lack of facilities and funding, more virtual universities, cost-effective solutions such as e-learning and privatization of education. Some of the benefits she mentions include on-demand, private learning, self-paced, and flexibility. How you can build an e-learning culture. Are you self-directed, self-motivated? Are you going to be in a study group? For the teacher or professor, develop knowledge and skills or understand learning and its need to create learning opportunities. But most importantly, they both lead to building an e-learning culture. And then the e-learning tools with all of the bullet points, including email, chat, online forum, web video conference. Every teacher and student should have an email account. That would be required today. You see it in Blackboard. To communicate, teacher can create discussion groups and students can post their comments. If you're online, depending upon the course, working together with study groups would be really helpful, especially in courses where you have to go over the content again and again, or if there are example exams or quizzes online where you can take them more than once. The Resource Center can conduct a live lecture to communicate with the students, as I'm doing right now, can be recorded and later used for on-demand lectures. And remember, in my e-learning template, you are an essential part of the course with all of your speeches. How can you learn from watching all of these videos, back to front, front to back? Conclusion, bullet point one. Electronic learning offers opportunity to raise educational standards in schools. Bullet point two, large range of electronic tools are available for teaching and learning. Bullet point three, involvement of teachers and parents is important. And the final bullet point, schools will need funding for access and training. And usually that's built into the tuition. Let's examine this excellent persuasive speech outline from a summer course from back to front. The conclusion, e-learning tools, building an e-learning culture, benefits, delivery mode will change, traditional and e-learning approach, e-learning blended mode, the growth of online education, facts, truth about electronic learning, what is electronic education? And then the title slide, online education as an effective educational method. What you have just seen from her outline structure is someone who had a faster pace of speaking. And she compensates for that by having more slides than she needs. So in her case, she's going to go through all of this data much quicker, which is OK. And she makes certain that she's got more than enough information to fill the time, which in this case was probably somewhere in the area of about seven to eight minutes. The design consistency for everything is excellent. The way in which the bullet points, the text image balance is set up is going to maximize her respective abilities to be extemporaneous and conversational. Not all of the outlines that you see here are going to be the same in any of these. But whatever works best for you. We've seen this particular speaker before. 
We saw her demonstrative speech, which was digital art. We also saw her informative speech outline dealing with Chinese calligraphy. Here you've got her persuasive speech on a world without the arts, the importance of teaching humanities in public schools. It's from, as you can see, the same course, and I'm intentionally taking these from the first summer session. They both happen to be seven years ago. So imagine what a world would be like without all of these humanities. Some are going to be literature-based, as you can see from Harry Potter. Some are going to be pop culture-based, such as Super Mario. And then she continues on, including the Mona Lisa, all different kinds of items that you could potentially find in a humanities course, which include lit, writing, foreign language, foreign culture, history, filmmaking, studio arts, band and choir. Immediately notice that with online education, that persuasive speech topic had 12 slides because she spoke a little bit faster. As I said, her pacing was rapid, which is okay in terms of articulation and enunciation. In this case, Bailey has seven. The devaluing of the arts in schools with an emphasis on STEM over the humanities. And you could probably also make a good case, not only for the humanities, but for the importance of kids to have recess. Less funding for humanities courses. Arkansas School for Mathematics, Sciences, and the Arts. And I should mention that the person who gave this speech, Bailey, was still a high school student. And she was on her way to returning to the Arkansas School for Mathematics and Sciences for her senior year of school. The importance of teaching humanities with the final slide, value of art, appreciation of culture and history, writing and reading, critical thinking skills. So that is her way of setting up bullet points to remain extemporaneous. Same thing in this case, from back to front. What is she using as her slides? Importance of teaching humanities. She's got a unique template, which is very colorful. She's got generic graphics, so she can be as extemporaneous as she wants and talk for as much as little to persuade us about any of these items, including ASMS, a, devaluing of the arts in schools, humanities courses, same thing with the different kinds of courses available, including obviously cinema and music. Imagine the same thing. There are five different graphics. She can spend as much time or as little, even on something such as ancient art. Here you can see the same thing and her title slide, again, which is artistically based, a world without the arts, the importance of teaching humanities in schools. Really excellent varieties of topics. We talked about this person before. Let's go ahead showing some of these presentations for demonstrating, informing, and persuading, and how with Bailey and how with Alina, their outlining styles as are all of your delivery styles going to be much more sophisticated as time goes on during the term. Traveling with Airbnb, first summer 2015, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 945. Again, it is not a coincidence that I'm showing these three outlines from the same course in the summer with the same preparation time that you have from seven years ago. Airbnb today is much more well-known around the world. So what is it? What are the pros? And it includes a clip for Airbnb. And I am looking at that in another window and the video is unavailable. If it were available today, I would go ahead and play it. And then Alina gives her personal experience of staying in an Airbnb venue in Austin, Texas some of the photos. She could have taken those herself or just downloaded photos from a venue online with a similar room style. And then interested, and there is a link 
to the Airbnb website. And that is working today. So let me put that up on the screen. A lot of you for these courses can incorporate interactivity. Remember one of the speeches that we saw that is on my YouTube channel from yesterday, where the young lady who gave the 11 minute speech, but it didn't drag, on being very aware of any type of medical issues with your dog. She played video during her presentation, but did not include audio. She narrated over it. This is interactivity from a website. So seven years later, the Airbnb website is still operative. Missouri, Michigan, Georgia, Wisconsin, Pittsburgh, Texas, not all that far away. And there's Austin, College Station, Lowell, Arkansas. This is something that has really taken off in the past 10 to 15 years. Maximizing your income. Hot Springs, Arkansas. Just some gorgeous venues here. And there's a unique setup in North Carolina. Again, not all that far away. Huntsville, Texas. Let's scroll down and see if we can find anything else that may be related to the Arklatex. There's another one in Hot Springs and move down just a little bit and another one. So you can see Hot Springs is a very popular venue for Airbnb. What we saw with Alina with her experience in Austin, Texas is $50. You just can't beat the price. Now, obviously that was years ago. Let's return to the outline. From all of your perspectives, Book your perfect place now. Persuading for the personal experience, the video clip, the pros, what it is. And those are six slides. So her style of speaking, obviously, is going to be a bit slower. The three presentations that we had in reverse chronological order had six, seven, and 13 slides, respectively whatever works for all of you in terms of time management. Now let's move on. Audio presentations, I should say that winner is always better is the final outline before we get to audio for medical marijuana. Not everyone has a webcam or it's broken. Why children should start sports at an early age. Why you should exercise. And then that gets us into video. Being a great father, belt up for life, why animations are an important and useful medium, cartoons, that was the presentation that we saw yesterday from Sam, close Sea World from Lexi, finding a church family from Lindsay, some of these people we've seen before from previous speeches. Heartworm prevention for dogs, that was Taylor. That was what I was talking about a moment ago. That was yesterday. Positive co-parenting from Sarah, we saw that yesterday. Pursuing celebrity lifestyles, that Sierra, that was from yesterday. Talk to someone about your problems from Sharissa, we also saw that. These are all of the YouTube speeches. The importance of kindness, I'm going to show that to you. Why you should attend college, I'm going to show that to you as well. Persuasive speech video, why you should not procrastinate from Jocelyn Keller. Our first pre presenter who ever sent me anything on Loom, we watched that yesterday, you can see she experimented with a larger template for her webcam on Loom. Why you should recycle, why you should set goals, we'll probably watch that one as well. Within this window, a number of outstanding persuasive speech topics with, I think, online education as an effective educational method, just really an outstanding, I'm going to scroll through that one final time. I said 13 slides, it's actually 12. Think about how much time and effort it takes with all of these to put together a storytelling structure 
that is going to work best for your delivery style. A quality representation of research, bullet points, font style, font selection, juxtaposing the slides in a way that is going to maximize your extemporaneous ability, and in this case, how you can remain persuasive all the way through. Some people are going to prefer face-to-face -face instruction, and that's certainly acceptable. But that brings us now as we come back to me. I wanted to show you a variety of persuasive speeches. Some of them are going to be available on YouTube. The first one that you are going to see relates to a topic that's not necessarily serious in the aspect of the world is going to end if this is not done, but it's persuasive from the standpoint of why it's nice to have a large family. The person that you're going to see is Addison. For many of you who are recording at home and don't necessarily have Loom or feel uncomfortable with its use, this type of setup, as you saw with Elizabeth for her demonstrative and informative speech, Ellie, if you want to do it this way with the laptop behind you in a graphic, it's certainly acceptable. In this case, she found a quiet room, or as quiet as she could find, in her home from April of 2020 for her persuasive speech on the benefits of being a member of a large family. She also uses video from one of her brothers and incorporates it into her slideshow. So there's unique interactivity. I've got closed captioning on. We'll make this full screen. And this is our first persuasive speech for topic selection. Why it's nice to be a part of a big family. And here we go. Good evening, everyone. My name is Addison. And tonight I'm going to be persuading you on why having seven siblings is the best. So let's get into it. <laughs> so number one is you're literally never bored. I can't be bored. I have seven siblings, even though only like four of them are in this um, presentation. Uh, life is always like a reality TV show. I, I personally would say that we're better than the Kardashians. I think we're funny. Um, there's always a lot of drama, but it's like good drama. It's always funny. And um, we just always have a lot of laughs and we always hang out and have fun. So this is a picture of us hiking with our dog. And then this is a family day when they came and my sister Bella Kate and I rode the swings. <laughs> Number two is you always have someone to lean on, um, whether it be someone in their late 20s or if it's someone who literally just hit double digits, you always have somebody who will be there for you and support you and just let you cry. And this is a picture of my brother. We were on FaceTime and we were both upset about school. <laughs> Um, three, you're never alone, so you can get lonely. I, If I want to be alone, I have to lock up all my doors and be quiet so they don't think I'm in there. Um, but even if I do lock my doors and they're not in here, they will always blow my phone up until they come in. <laughs> Number four is you're always going to be entertained. Always, there is never a dull moment when there's a large group of people. So everyone's different, but everyone's also a lot alike. And it's always funny if there's beef, like, or if your siblings are fighting or arguing or beefing with one another, you can just sit back and watch. It's not that great when you're the one they're beefing with, but it's pretty funny if it's not you. So our Christmas card or our Christmas pictures were pretty funny because we were all at each other's throat, except for Maddox, the middle child who was just hanging out. <laughs> and then this is of a year ago today of my sister and I and like our whole family dying eggs. Her egg cracked. Um, but yeah. 
So next are some honorable mentions of how it's always entertaining. There's always something happening, something. So uh, for starters, these two videos right here are from New Year's Eve, like four or five years ago. And we made like 250 little smokies, like the little weenies that you put in like crock pots and stuff. So we made like 250 of them because there was a lot of us there. And Beckett, our youngest brother, he loved them. I think we maybe each had 10. So this kid probably had at least 160 smokies by himself. And he loves them. <laughs> So he ate at least 150 by himself, and there was only nine left, and he ate the rest of them, and he was actually upset he cried. He also did get very sick. <laughs> He also broke his arm. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so as you can tell, it's always something in the house. Always something. Um, also, they are your permanent and forced best friends. I mean, you spend 24-7 together, like 24 hours a day, seven days a week with the same seven people. You're bound to become best friends. And... Even though they get on your nerves, they're literally always there for you, which is the best. So Beckett, again, he's kind of our craziest one. He, uh, this is just a funny video of him. I, I love this video. I don't think, I don't think they say that. What do they say? Like, moose. <laughs> That's it. Look at me. But yeah. <laughs> Um, number six is you can't be embarrassed. So my shame is their shame. If I say something silly, it's okay. I've, they've probably said something even sillier than I have. And it's always just fun. So no one can ever be embarrassed. Everyone's kind of clowns to say the least. And last but not least there's always enough people for games. We have game nights all the time, whether it's cards or board games or charades, anything. We never have to look at how many players you need to play the games because we know that we will always have enough because there's so many of us. So these are just some videos of us playing games. This one is us playing Uno, but it's really just the kids being crazy. Who's gonna get wet? Two, three, <laughs> Just kidding. That was the one of us playing Pie Face. This one is the Uno one. <laughs> and that concludes my presentation. Thank you. <laughs> Look at the smile on her face. Think about a persuasive topic that you're going to feel comfortable with. In this case, she wanted to do something that was uplifting and tout the virtues of having a large family. The look of joy on her face, even right there, which I paused one second before because it recycles whether it's in Loom or YouTube, that tells the story. She's proud of her family. She's proud of showing those videos. Let's go back about a minute. Let's mute the audio and go back to about the five minute mark or so. Now just watch about Kent being embarrassed. Is she speaking in complete sentence structure? Pretty much. When you're conversing, it's not unusual for us to use contractions. But I wanted to play it with the audio down here, primarily because notice her finger She's got an effect which leads into the next slide and how she takes the video probably from her cell phone and incorporates it into the slides. Look at her eye contact. Very likable, very authoritative, conversational, 
not a lot of issues with vocalics, drop Gs. How she's setting up the video, and let's bring back the audio. Two, three, four. <laughs> Just kidding. That was the one of us playing Pie Face. This one is the Uno one. <laughs> And that concludes my presentation. Thank you. And again, that's the end of her presentation. We've got so many different videos that we can choose from, but I really appreciate the fact, and keep in mind, that informative and persuasive speeches were the first ones that people were delivering during the pandemic and we're basically just making this up on the fly, what's going to work and what's not, because that was a Monday night class. Really an outstanding job and very creative in placing the family videos into her persuasive speech structure. We transition on to someone that you have seen before. This is Matt Huffman. The two speeches that you've seen from him, demonstrative, on being a volunteer fireman and informative on bariatric surgery because as you'll recall, that's something that he had undergone. His persuasive speech is diametrically opposite to what we saw from Addison in that it is very serious in the wake of what has taken place recently in Uvalde, Texas. Here is Matt's persuasive speech from the fall semester of 2020. It is armed staff at schools. And he is very thoughtful on a very serious topic. And I wanted to play this not only because of the topic itself and the quality of the research, but how one person, among some of the others that you've seen, progresses with content, delivery, visuals, as the term progresses, whether it is spring, summer, fall. And this is Matt's presentation, Persuasive, Armed Staff at Schools. Here we go. Good evening, everybody. My name is Matt Huffman, and tonight I'm going to be doing my persuasive speech. I would like for you to not look at yourself as me presenting it to the class. I would like for you to look at yourself as a school board member of a, of a school district or the parent of a student that goes to that school district because my topic tonight is armed staff at schools and I'm going to be doing it the presentation as if I were giving it to the school board or to the parents to persuade them that we need to protect our children. So gunfire on school grounds in the United States. An article by CNN, since 2008 or 2009 to 2018, there have been at least 177 school shootings on K-12 campuses. And all of those shootings, there were 356 victims out of those 356 victims, there were 115 killed. Their data shows that these shootings are increasing in the United States. In 2009, there was 13 shootings. Now you can't see the graphic real good, but I'm gonna present that to you. In 2010, there were eight shootings. In 2011, there was 12. 2000 and 12 there was seven in 2013 there was 12 and right around the time of 2014 is when it starts picking up in 2014 there was 20 shootings in 2015 there was 17 2016 there was 35 in 2017 29 and in 2018 there was 29 so there's two types of armed staff. There is a school resource officer, which the United States Department of Justice defines a school resource officer as a sworn law enforcement officer responsible for safety and crime prevention in schools. 
The National Association of School Resource Officers estimates that there are between 14 and 20,000 nationwide. There's another type, it's a commissioned school security officer. This is a private security officer who has completed additional training and who has been granted authorization by the Arkansas State Police to carry a firearm while on public school property, K-12 campuses. This can be an administrator, a teacher, a paraprofessional, or any staff member at a school district. So let's take a look at responses if there was a armed person that come onto our campus. So the law enforcement response, our city has one full-time police officer and that full-time police officer is the SRO for our district. And they have three part-time police officers. Now the three part-time police officers only work nights and on the weekends. So they would not be around during the day, uh, only the SRO. The county sheriff's office is 25 miles away from us. There's only, there's three to five deputies on at any given time on a shift. If you look at it during the day, there's other sheriff's office personnel that are working and that's usually about 15. So you're looking at about 18 to 20 uh, personnel from the sheriff's office that could respond to our district. The average response time from the sheriff's office, if they were all at the sheriff's office is 15 to 20 minutes. If there was a deputy close within 10 miles, he could be there in, in about five to 10, somewhere around in there. Uh, the closest town with a full-time officer on duty is nine and a half miles away. And it'll take him about five to 10, 15 minutes to get here as well. But according to the FBI, active shooter incidents were over 69.8% of the time in five minutes or less. So if we were to have an active shooter come on our campus, it could be done in five minutes. If our SRO is taken out right then, right off the bat, then the, the, the shooting will be over with by the time that anybody else gets there. So let's look at the school's response. So our school has close to approximately 45 teachers in grades K through 12 and approximately about the same amount in support, support staff like uh, paraprofessionals, the janitorial crew, the cafeteria crew, building maintenance. So we would like to put 12 trained staff members that are armed. This is not including the SRO. Each member will be strategically placed throughout the school, elementary, middle school, high school. So now our response time is from minutes if we were to rely on law enforcement to seconds because once the gunfire is heard, our teachers can secure their room and go engage whoever is doing the shooting on campus. The staff members will also be trained in basic first aid, CPR, stop the bleed, how to use tourniquets, AEDs, that kind of stuff. So that's our response time. Now, look, <clears throat> now let's look at the costs that would be associated with doing this. So if we were to add another school resource officer, because I know some of you would probably feel better about adding another law enforcement officer instead of arming teachers. So, but adding another SRO, the cost of adding another school resource officer to our district would be about $35,000 a year, because that's what his salary will be. Plus you got to think about the uh, cost of another vehicle that will be outfitted for that school resource officer. Depending on the vehicle, the equipment that you put in it, <clears throat> you're looking at about $30,000 right off the top for that. And then the upkeep of that vehicle would be close to 10,000 plus a year. That's insurance, maintenance, oil changes, gas, stuff like that. So then arming teachers, the upfront cost uh, uh, would be close to $23,000. Uh, that's for the company to come in, train our 12, teachers, and then it's around $5,000 each year for continued training. Then we would like to give a one-time stopping to each teacher, each staff member that we're going to arm of about $1,200, and that will uh, allow them to go buy their gun, uh, holsters, ammo, anything like that that they need 
to do their job. So you're looking at the first year around $37,000 for 12 staff members and then the five years additional training uh, a year and then additional training after that. So what are the benefits? The benefits are is that you as a parent or a school board member could have peace of mind that your child student will be protected at all times throughout the day. So now you've went from one armed staff member to 13. You have 13 guns on campus now that can stop anything that were to come do harm to our children. And know that we will do whatever it takes to protect your students and our students. In the long run, it will save the district money, not having to pay another SRO every year. And protection will be immediate when the threat happens and not afterwards. So I want to thank you for listening to my speech today. Have a good time. When we're looking at these different types of speeches, not only are there changes being made around the United States with security in school districts, but you'll also see a police presence at churches. I know there's at least one in Magnolia. If I've ever driven by it on Sunday morning, you'll actually see a police car right there. I don't know whether or not the individual or individuals are staying in the vehicle or whether they're not they're in the church. But when it comes to this type of topic, I'm not really interested as a professor whether you agree or disagree with Matt's viewpoints or anyone who gave the opposite view. It's whether any speaker, in this case Matt, makes a strong case persuasively when it comes to the research, when it comes to any type of data that he provides to support his thesis. And then there's something else that comes into play. I always talk about that triad of content, delivery, and visuals, because we spent an entire class period going over the informal checklist during the first week of the term. Can you see improvement in his content, in his delivery, in his visuals? Does he or the person that you saw for the first time, Addison, are any of these individuals improving looking more smooth, looking more professional in front of the camera. If it's a face-to-face -face course, then obviously it would be a little bit different because the persona that you present online through a webcam or on some type of cell phone with a YouTube video is not going to be exactly the same as an in-person experience, but it's still a relative barometer of one's overall stylistic approach. Matt comes across as confident, as knowledgeable, as thoughtful, as persuasive to his particular point of view. He's poised, and I do appreciate the fact, and I think I may have teased him about this online at the time, because you recall from looking at a previous course video for, in, for informative speech, either research or topic selection last week, his bariatric surgery speech you could tell the camera was a little bit cockeyed. You can see from this particular perspective that he took a long time to set everything up, tightened up the camera shot a little bit, still going from his laptop, which is connected to the wide screen at the church where he and his wife, I believe, were both youth pastors. So very good job overall. Just by the way, for a moment, that he presents himself to the camera. Does he look nervous? Does he look self-conscious? No. You do this so often, and you know what I'm going to say, because I always say it. The more you practice, the more you work to the camera, it just becomes second nature. Like being conversational, like being extemporaneous, everything eventually is going to blend. That symbiotic relationship of talking, and reacting to the camera is going to just be second nature for all of you. And it's nice to see the improvement. So with Addison, her topic was certainly much different than what we had for Matt, but e each of them were equally effective in making their points. Again, even if you've got controversial topics, you're not 
judging someone on what someone says. You're judging them based on the effectiveness of their methodology in trying to reinforce their thesis. Through research, through personal experience, through the knowledge they provide. Not necessarily hearsay, but research based with personal experience. What I want to do next is to go to Google Drive because the remainder of our presentations are going to come from there. You can access these on my website. I'll show you my YouTube channel at the end of class to remind you of some of the other presentations that are available from that location. The next person that we are going to see is Madison. We have examined her material before. Her persuasive speech is going to be on the importance of kindness. She's in the bottom left for Loom. And let's go ahead and get her presentation on the record. Hey, my name is Madison Pogue, and this is my persuasive speech on the importance of kindness. I always grew up with the phrase, kill people with kindness, so I thought this is the perfect time to share why it is so important to be kind to others. So what is kindness? It's really hard to be kind to people if you don't even know what it means. So here are five words that I thought of as soon as I thought of being kind to someone. There's a couple that kind of stand out, so I thought I'd just go over those real quick. But gentle is probably like, what do you mean by gentle? So be gentle with people. You have to understand everyone's human. People are going to make mistakes. People are growing, they're changing, they're evolving into who they will be, and you have to learn on the way there. So you have to be gentle with them, just like you would be gentle with yourself. Warm-hearted is probably another word that, or a couple words that people are kind of a little bit, what do you mean by warm-hearted? So be inviting, be someone that people want to be around, and just be a light when you're in the room. Don't be someone who strips the room of anything inspiring or just nice and uplifting. Be someone who people want to be around, your source of happiness, your source of energy, your source of light to people and their lives. So why is it important? There are three things that came straight to my head as soon as I was thinking about this. The golden rule, the unknown, and mental illnesses, which I'm going to dive deeper in. So the golden rule, treat others the way that you want to be treated. So there's a lot of different ways that the saying goes, but it all means the same thing. You want people to treat you with kindness, so you should treat others with kindness. So, you know, I don't want to be yelled at. Personally, I really don't like being yelled at, so I'm never going to go to someone and start yelling at them. Um, so it's just little things like that. It can get extreme, but just the basics are kind of what to focus on when it comes to being kind and being consciously kind to others. So the unknowns, what's going on in someone's life, the past, the present, and the future are all full of unknowns. We don't know everything that's going on in other people's lives. Only you know what's truly all going on in your life. I don't even know what all is going on in my life, if I'm being completely honest. So. It's really hard to be able to judge someone's situation or how you should treat them. I think you should always treat someone with kindness, but especially since you don't know what they're dealing with at the moment, it's really important to stay kind and stay nice and be a positive person in someone's life. Never be a negative force in someone's life. So some things that you might not know about is someone passing away um, that can really take a toll on someone's mental health and which we'll get to that too but it can really take a toll on them mentally and you might not know because it might go on behind closed doors along with that divorce or family home type of issues that they are dealing with behind closed doors so you have no idea trauma whether this is getting in a huge car crash and then a bunch of things are happening in their life or again home life trauma that can mentally mess 
a lot of people up. So things like that, the list can go on and on, but those are just a few examples. So the last little bullet point that I had was mental illnesses. I touched on this with my athletes and mental illness speech a couple weeks ago, but mental illness is very prevalent in today and especially in today's society with social media and everything like that depression anxiety just adhd all those kinds of things if someone's kind to you if you have a mental illness or not it's always going to make you feel a little bit better whether you like to admit it or not subconsciously you are thinking oh wow they took time out of their day to be nice to me whether it was helping me carry my stuff into school or complimenting my shoes. It's just every little thing really matters, especially when it comes to people with mental illnesses because they're fighting a battle in their head. And if you can help them at all with that, why not? So at least that's my thought process with that. If I can help someone out, help someone, um, whether it's with something, a task or mentally, I want to do that. Thank you so much for listening and I hope you're kind to someone. And there she is, really being open and honest about the subject matter. Because when you're talking about the importance of kindness, you don't know in an online or face-to-face -face course what's going on in the lives of your classmates. And what she, among other things, is saying is it's really important to be empathetic. What you see from her delivery is two things. First of all, she is coming across as empathetic about the subject matter. But most importantly, Madison is being sincere. Again, you never know what's going on in a person's life, and she identifies with that all the way through. The importance of kindness, an excellent topic. You can see from the upper left-hand portion of the screen, this was a spring 2021 course. And because it was in the spring, not during the summer, that's when the 30-day, 28-day trial period for Loom ends. And we're pretty much disciplined if you're using this format and not necessarily paying for a subscription, which is not required of any of you, to go through the five-minute routine she had the five minute mark and i'll show you we'll mute the audio bring it back to the beginning she's starting right at five minutes let's go ahead and play notice when she starts to record the presentation that the red light comes on and the timer starts to move in reverse you did see i was trying to experiment on Google Drive if closed captioning works, but I would have to move it up. One of the other elements of me going back to the beginning on this, always make certain that slides go through, whether it's Microsoft PowerPoint or Google Slides, run everything through spell check because even though she goes through the presentation is very effective, she was an A speaker, she misspelled generous and it sticks out like a sore thumb it's one of those things where after the fact and i've talked about this during previous class sessions you might have a really good delivery and notice there was something in one of the slides that you would want to go back and change and you may cringe in this case not from your delivery but from a bit of the visuals but you don't want to go back and re-record the speech always double check Look at her at the bottom. The lighting is set up very well. The sincere nature of her speech, as what you saw with Matt talking about arming staff in schools or the potential of doing so, or what we saw, first of all, from Addison, the importance on her case of having a large family or being in part of one, all of them come out as being extremely effective extremely knowledgeable and that's where to a great degree the persuasibility comes through same thing here notice that she's got her webcam set up in such a place where she can look at her graphics she can look at her bullet points and 
remain relatively full with her eye contact through the presentation. How can we tell as a class you have practiced smoothness, no hesitancy, fewer vocalics and drop Gs as we progress to the third of the four major graded speeches. So she did a really good job, as have the other two so far, in being persuasive to their respective topics. That brings us to someone that you have seen previously. Finley's presentation on emotional intelligence last week that you noticed from the fall intercession of 2020 was particularly effective and well-researched. Outstanding graphics through slides go. One of the first students to utilize that format. She is going to be the next person that we watch. And this is available at the website. Persuasive speech on why you should set goals. Everybody, my name is Finley, and today I'll be talking to you guys about why you should set goals. So first things first, what are goals? So goals are a set commitment one makes for themselves to achieve in the future, and goals usually require work and tend to help people plan for themselves. So basically what goals are is they are something that you say that you want to do, and then you have to come up with a plan in order to achieve that thing. And it's something that you haven't, I mean, you could have already achieved it, but it's usually it's something that you haven't yet achieved or that you are not currently achieving right now that you want to achieve. So you are setting in place basically an end point, a place that you want to be in the future. And so there are many reasons to set goals, but the reasons that I will be discussing with you today are how goals direct focus, they provide short-term motivation, long-term vision, helping organize time, sustaining momentum, creating accountability, measuring progress, and they help to manage one's life. So the first thing I will be talking about is how goals help you direct your focus. So when you set a goal, you are basically telling yourself where you want to be in the future. And when that happens, you are able to allocate the set amount of time and energy in order to achieve that goal. And in doing that, you are automatically directing your focus because you have a starting point and an end point and you are focusing your eyes on that endpoint, and immediately you begin to like alter your life in ways to help you kind of reach that goal, which is good. The next thing I will be discussing with you is how goals help provide short-term motivation. So especially now because of COVID, it's very easy to fall into a slump and feel like you kind of have no purpose, you're kind of not moving forward in life, and what setting goals do is setting goals kind of give you something to achieve, give you something to look forward to, to move towards, to kind of give you that like kickstart, that motivation that you need to kind of do things for yourself and also want to better yourself and things like that. I know, especially for me being home, it's like the days seem like they just repeat themselves and there's nothing really new going on. I feel like I'm not really like working towards something. I'm not moving towards something. So what has really helped me is setting short-term goals, like, okay, this week, I want to do this every single day. And it just keeps me motivated, keeps me kind of feeling like I have a purpose and things like that, which is always nice. And so the next thing is goals help provide long-term vision. So what this means is when you set a goal, you are kind of visualizing where you want to be in the future. And when you can see something, it's much easier to kind of achieve that thing and then set a plan in place in order to achieve that thing. So goals kind of help you decide where you want your life to be, where you see yourself and in years ahead and kind of provide purpose for you as well. And it provides something to work towards and allows you to create a game plan and put steps in place in order to be able to achieve that goal, which is always nice. And what goals also do is goals help you organize your time. So when someone sets a goal, they must allocate, allocate <laughs> the time and energy in order to be able to complete it. And so what this does is kind of you have to prioritize. And so 
you will spend less time doing this, less time doing that in order to put the time towards achieving your goal. And what this also does is organize your life. So it organizes kind of like what you're doing, what you're spending your time on, and it helps make sure that you're not wasting any more time as well. In addition, goals help you maintain momentum. So like we were talking about earlier, how especially lately it's kind of been hard to feel motivated, feel like you are keeping on moving forward and have a purpose. So what these goals do is obviously every single day you are trying to work towards that goal. And so when you are working towards that goal, you're inhibiting yourself from being able to remain at a constant and remain at the same place because as you get closer and closer to achieving that goal, you are consistently moving. You are consistently improving, bettering yourself, things like that. And so they help you kind of maintain momentum, keep moving, and which is always good. And it helps kind of internally you feel better about yourself because you feel like you are bettering yourself, which always helps you kind of feel validated in the things that you are doing, which is always good. And so also what that kind of does is it helps you not fall into like a slump, not fall into a rut where you're just like staying stagnant. It helps remind you that you are moving, you have something that you must achieve, you have to achieve, or you're letting yourself down, which you don't want to do. In addition, goals help you hold yourself accountable. So they create accountability for yourself. A lot of times we are out of control about what happens in our life because life is life and like things just come out of nowhere that we're not really in control. But what these goals do is they put us in control. They give us kind of this say of how we're going to go about certain things in our life. They put us in control of our life. And what that does is it increases our self confident or self-assurance it's like we're in charge of whatever we are putting our mind to and so we have to achieve it no one else is going to achieve it for you no one else is in charge of that it's only yourself and so um basically writing that goal down like saying that this is what you want to achieve kind of helps you hold yourself accountable because you are the only one who is in charge of making that happen no one else which is always good in addition, goals help you measure your progress. So when you set your goals, you are obviously at a starting point. So you have not kind of created, you're not on that path to achieving that goal yet, but you are at your starting point. And so what setting goals does is it helps you see where your starting point was. You remember where your starting point was, and it helps you see where you want to be and then along that pathway you can see where you were and where you're going and you can see where you are now and the closer you get to reaching that goal the more you can see how you are bettering yourself um creating just a better life experience for yourself in general and it kind of prevents you from being able to just fumble around because you have this endpoint that you were looking at and so when you see your endpoint, you see your starting point, you are able to kind of check off those little boxes on your way to completing that goal, which is always good. And so there's also this fact that if you write down your goals, you are more likely to achieve them just because I'm not sure why, but I just know that if you write down your goals, you are more likely to achieve those goals. So it's very important when you are coming up with goals, saying that you, this is something you want to achieve, you make sure to write those down just so you are more likely to achieve them, more likely to complete them. And so last thing I would like to say is I believe that what everyone should do is everyone should set some goals for themselves right now, get a pen and paper and write some goals down. Goals are a great way to help you feel better about yourself, grow self-assurance, grow self-confidence, and I encourage you to set goals for yourselves so we are all able to kind of move forward, better ourselves together. Thank you. And by the way, when it comes to Finley, not long after she finished this course, in the fall intercession right there of 2020, during the month of December, 19 class sessions, just like what you're doing now in the summer, she became a mass communication major, emphasis in mass media, one of my advisees, member of the Honors College. When she's talking about setting goals, she really means it because in her case, 
she graduated in a relatively quick period of time after becoming a major in mass communication, did an excellent job, just completed her bachelor's degree in May and has a scholarship to attend graduate school at Texas A&M University in College Station studying public service. So when you examine her overall style, she's very sincere. She's very knowledgeable, outstanding research, very likable, personable delivery. Can you tell I'm somewhat biased? Whenever you do quality work, I will tout your virtues to the rooftops because most of these students really do an excellent job. And that's what I would like to do with all of you when the time comes. But let's go ahead and remind all of you as to where Finley found her template. Very creative, stylistic approach to the graphics. She uses something called Slides Go. Let me show you, I placed it on the screen before, the website for Slides Go for unique templates that are related to slideshows. Google Slides and PowerPoint templates. In case that's something that you're interested in now or in the future, all you have to do in a Google search is find Slides Go with the address and just download any of these free templates. And there, if I click on that, you can see more. Style, color, license, sizes, formats. Look for anything that's free. And feel free to experiment with anything that you can find. I will tell all of you this. For the presentations that you give, there may be one out of the four that you think, yeah, it's okay, but it's not great. You can always spice up any of that data with a really attractive stylistic approach to your visuals. Something that you might find very basic, if you change the color, the background color, any of the formats, you can take it and make it much more interesting. World Kebab Day, for instance. And it goes on and on. Let's go one more page. Embrace your geekness, apparently. Education major for college. That is really appropriate, guys, because that is going to be our next topic. So let's move on from Slides Go and different styles of templates into our next to last persuasive video example. As you can imagine, I have many tabs on the screen. This particular topic obviously does tie into why you should set goals and even that slides go template on college. We move next to Madison on the importance of kindness on my website to why you should attend college. Now, of course, there are people, as you're well aware, that forget to put their slideshow into the slideshow mode. And I believe that's what happened here. But I like the speech, and it's persuasive, so let's go ahead and play it. This is from Carly. Why you should attend college from the fall intercession of 2020. She was a classmate of Finley's, the person that you just saw. Here we go. Hi, my name is Carly Carmony, and this is my persuasive speech over why you should attend college. There are many benefits of a college degree, such as making more money. Financially, people who obtain a degree have a higher income than those who do not. There are also better requirement contribution matching, as well as the ability to apply for childcare stipends, health and dental insurance, promotions within your company, and job stability. 
the difference of money in the same work field with and without a degree. People without a college degree make a considerable amount less than people with a college degree working the exact same job. The weekly earnings for workers without a high school diploma were about $488 per week compared to people with a high school diploma whenever they make about $668 per week. Workers with some college or a two-year associate degree earned about $761 a week, while workers with bachelor's degree or advanced degrees earned about $1,200 per week. The experience. People don't only come to college just for the degree, but they also come to get the experience that they couldn't get in high school. Like, joining a sorority or fraternity is a big part of the college experience. Getting a job on campus teaches responsibility. Staying up all night cramming for tests in your study groups, which professors, they say not to do, but it happens. Making lifelong friends is a part of the experience and also going to sporting events. Networking. A lot of people you meet in college can improve your life. Professors you create bonds with write recommendation letters for scholarships and write in jobs in the future. There are many opportunities to intern or help your professors with their research as well. Joining clubs and groups your professors are in charge with also shows your willingness to participate outside of class. Learning new skills and knowledge. College just isn't just about getting a degree and getting out. Many people learn so many things, not only in their majors, but also in the prerequisite classes. Taking a simple world history class can help you understand how civilization got to where it is now and how it will advance in the future. Also, taking a computer science class can help in many ways, such as communication, as well as learning how to use your laptop for homework and research. Changing your living environment slash getting out of your comfort zone. After leaving home and your parents, people realize they have to start doing things on their own, like financially taking care of themselves, making themselves go to class, and teaching responsibility. Being on your own for the first time also helps create a foundation you will need for any successful future. Not knowing anyone in college is, is a great thing whenever you come into college because whenever you're stuck with people in high school, you kind of gravitate towards them because you have to, but in college, you can find the people you're most similar like and really have a good relationship with them. Having a college degree shows that you can push yourself to accomplish something. Employers who will hire you one day will want to see that you can commit to something and having a degree will show that you made the effort to push through four years of studying and test in order to have a more successful future. Having the degree will also show that you have the skills needed for the job you're applying for, and it will give you the extra boost above someone who does not have a college degree. Having a college degree is a stepping stone to a higher education. A college degree is a requirement for some professional schools, such as medical, dental, and pharmacy, and several other schools require a four-year degree with specific requirements in order to just be considered into the program. My goal one day is to go to dental school, and in order for that, I have to have the Bachelor's of Biology and all the requirements the dental school requires. Did you know that you will have a happier and healthier life if you have a college degree? In studies recently, in studies recently researched, it has been proven that people with a college degree live a happier and healthier life by exercising more and smoking less. They tend to live approximately <coughs> nine years longer than one without a degree. College educated people also volunteer and vote more, making their communities better. There are some simple facts about college I want to discuss. Business is the most common major. College graduates find more satisfaction with their future jobs. Most college graduates agree that a degree is worth the time and money in order to be successful, and more females attend college than males do. Thank you so much for listening to my persuasive speech over why you should attend college. And she really cuts it close. Fall intercession, she's got the five minute timer and it is counting down and she wraps it up with one second to spare. Now I can tease her after the fact because this is in Google Slides and she forgot to go into the slideshow from the beginning. 
Luckily, there weren't any issues. You can still see the graphics. Now, in this case, for the speeches this week, I've really tried to a great degree just to play them from front to back as we would, as I told you yesterday in a face-to-face -face course. Let's check out, though, in this case, Facts of College, Happier and Healthier, Stepping Stone to Higher Education, Having a College Degree shows you can push yourself to accomplish something, Eye contact, relatively consistent. Changing your living environment, getting out of your comfort zone. Bottom left-hand portion of the screen. Learning new skills and knowledge. Networking. The experience. Difference of money in the same work field with or without a degree. And we traverse to the beginning of her speech, beginning of a college degree, benefits I should say and why you should attend college. Now let's go ahead and pause it. As we did with our first presenter of the evening, let's take a look at a little bit of the eye contact as she goes through. We also checked this out with Madison in Loom. Addison on YouTube. Stylistic approach is very sound. As you can tell, she feels more comfortable working primarily from bullet points. But as we go to the end, I am going to sneak a peek on the left-hand side. It looks like she's got 10 slides, and there she wraps it up. So let's go back here, the end of her speech. Let's pick this up and listen to her last few seconds about college I want to discuss. Business is the most common major. College graduates find more satisfaction with their future jobs. Most college graduates agree that a degree is worth the time and money in order to be successful and more females attend college than males do. Thank you so much for listening to my persuasive speech over why you should attend college. And there's two seconds smiling and there's one. And I have something from her self-evaluation speech critique that I'm actually going to play <clears throat> later on during the term because it is quite striking in terms of its own. What I did yesterday was to play six different informative speeches, all of them on my YouTube channel. I'm also going to play six speeches this evening, more of a blend of YouTube and Loom. Some of the YouTubes are not on my YouTube channel, but the last one I want to show you is a serious topic. It is recycling. From a constructive criticism standpoint, I wish the speaker would have had better light, but sometimes you can't really change the location of your webcam, or you don't necessarily have access to a ring light. But this is well-researched, very persuasive, as everything that you've seen on a variety of topics on the website, on video, whether it's YouTube or Loom over the past two days. Our final persuasive speech video of the evening on the importance of recycling. Here we go. Hi everyone, my name is Beth Harvey and today I'm going to be giving my persuasive speech over why you should recycle. Recycling and some facts about the US. Nine out of 10 solid waste does not get recycled in the United States. In the United States alone, we throw away about 2.5 million plastic bottles every single hour. It takes 500 years for the average size plastic water bottle to fully decompose. The amount of plastic saran wrap produced annually could shrink wrap the entire state of Texas. Glass bottles also take around 4,000 years to fully decompose. Energy saved. 
recycling plastic saves twice as much energy as it typically takes to burn plastic. The amount of energy it takes to make 1.5 million tons of plastic could power 250,000 American homes for over one year. One recycled plastic water bottle saves enough energy to run a 100 watt light bulb for over four hours. Landfills. Studies show that nearly 80% of the items in landfills could have been recycled. Landfills often create soil pollution, which can greatly affect land and people around the landfill. Many studies have shown harmful chemicals found in the soil from landfills to create birth defects, skin problems, and even some forms of cancer. Air pollution from landfills consists of methane and carbon dioxide, which are extremely bad for our environment and trees. So the more you recycle, the less your trash and things end up in these landfills. It helps make things smaller, it helps these effects not to happen so much in the world. Reduction of pollution. Pollution can lead to visibility impairment and many health conditions if the pollution rises to a certain point. Over 3 million children younger than the age of five die annually from environmental pollution factors. Air pollution is one of the leading risk factors for death in the world. Often this is worse in uh, countries such as China and Afghanistan. I know a man personally who works for Cooper Tire, Tire in Texarkana, and he travels to China a lot for business trips and a lot of other Cooper Tire supervisor things. And he says, as soon as you step off the plane, you can visibly not see 100 feet in front of you because the smog and the pollution is so bad. He says it's just hard to breathe there because it's so full of smoke in the air and it's just absolutely gross. Obviously, America is not that bad, but we still need to take care of our earth. Something as simple as making recycled paper creates 74% less air pollutants and 35% less water pollutants than creating new paper. Recycling also creates jobs. In the United States, we throw about $1.4 billion worth of recyclable packages and containers every year. So essentially, we're throwing money down the drain. 757,000 American jobs have been produced from re reuse and recycling businesses and activities. These jobs have provided nearly 36 billion worth of wages each year for these workers. So recycling is not only good for the environment, but it's really good for our economy, producing more jobs and helping the American people survive. It's not always easy. I recognize, um, especially being in a small uh, town like Magnolia or even Texarkana, it's hard. And nine out of 10 people say that they would recycle if it's easier. Depending on your city, sometimes it is easier. You see the recycle rate in certain cities like LA and California and stuff is a lot higher and it's because they have a lot more money in those cities to actually make it easier for the people to do so. I know that in Texarkana, especially in certain areas, because, you know, there's uh, different cities that branch off. But in my school, Redwater, whenever I was in high school, it was almost, it was over 30 minutes to drive to the, the nearest recycling plant. And uh, so that's over an hour that you would spend driving there and back. It's a lot of time. We had a teacher that would uh, ask everyone to save paper in bins. And then at like each semester, the end of the semester, she would gather up all of those paper bins and she would take it to the recycling plant. But especially where she lived, I think it took her almost two full hours there and back to drive there and to actually drop off that paper. And they do give you some money, but it, she always said that it wasn't even worth her gas money. So sometimes people have to go way out of their way to really get some recycling done in places like Texarkana. And even in Magnolia, I know that the city trash no longer uses those blue recycling bins that you'll see. And it simply goes in with the rest of the trash. And so it's really hard, uh, especially when uh, you live in such small towns. But um, you can especially look on campus. The closest picture to it I could find was up here in the top. They have these divided recycling bins that will have like paper, plastic, and I think aluminum. And that is one really good way that we can recycle on campus. So what does this mean for you? Recycling doesn't have to be a huge life change. One small thing is better than nothing. 
finding those trash bins that I just showed a similar picture to is super easy. Walking five more feet to one of those instead of a trash can and acknowledging that you have plastic and putting it in the little plastic thing is really good for the environment. Um, find someone in your community that will help you recycle. Like the lady that I had in high school that would take the uh, paper to the recycling plant. See if someone will do that for you. See if there's someone that's passionate about recycling that you know. Another easy way is to get a Brita filter in your dorm instead of buying water bottles all the time. It's going to save you money because eventually, if you think about it, buying that a case of water bottles every couple of weeks, it eventually adds up versus you have a Brita filter that you can just keep in your little mini fridge. It is very uh, eco-friendly and will save you money. Overall, recycling creates less pollution, uses less water, uses less energy, and it helps make our life better. It helps make the quality of life better in America and it helps even our little bit of reducing air pollution helps places like China where we see that the air pollution is absolutely horrible and in places like Afghanistan as well. So every little thing matters and even one single change in your life to um, making a change to just recycle a little bit more makes a huge difference. So once again, my name is Beth Hervey. Um, this is why you should recycle even a little bit. A little bit is more than you think. And thank you so much for your time. Really excellent blend of research and personal experience when she went to high school in the state of Texas. I do wish looking at it, and this was like Finley, fall intercession of 2020, I do wish that her lighting was a little bit better. I indicated before she began, sometimes there are things that are beyond your control. But just super research, persuasive all the way through. Each of the presentations that you've seen for topic research today, topic selection today, and research yesterday are persuasive in their own ways. Again, it's not necessarily that you agree with what the student says or doesn't say. It's the effectiveness of trying to be faithful to their persuasive thesis when you are critiquing them. You're not critiquing the persuasive speech based on your personal opinions. You're critiquing it based on their evaluation of the topic in terms of the overall research, the personal experiences that she provided. Beth really did an excellent job. We've examined a lot of different video over the past couple of days, six yesterday and six today, but of course, all of those videos are available in the course videos as well on Blackboard. And there are a couple of things that I want to mention before we officially conclude for today. This is yesterday's course video in progress. Let's pick up about one minute to 90 seconds of this in real time from yesterday's course videos. Different types of minimal text for this presentation, but it worked quite well. Now let's continue on to the spring semester of 2021. And by the way, also a very impressive complete sentence structure. So we move from fall intercession exactly like a first summer course, 19 course sessions. So the person that you just saw, Sarah and Sharissa earlier, talk about your problems. They're working on the exact same schedule that you are. 19 class sessions, speech three out of four. And that brings us to spring of 2021. Now I should indicate, the person who gave this speech told me, Professor Ruppert, this is somewhat of a lengthy presentation because I think it's really important that anyone who is an animal owner, particularly dogs, understands the challenges that are faced with all the different diseases that dogs can have. And she felt very strongly about this particular persuasive speech on heartworm prevention. It runs longer, more than 11 minutes, but it doesn't drag. And let's put this 
on the record, keeping in mind spring, fall semester, fall intercession of 2020. Now we move on to spring of 2021. Heartworm prevention for dogs. In a longer presentation like this, as you can imagine, complete sentence structure is going to be key. And we've seen Taylor before. Put the closed captioning on. Um, my name is Taylor Abby. And that is her dog. And you can tell that just closed captioning, you click on that and all of a sudden it just wants to take off. Our next presentation of the day, heartworm prevention for dogs from spring 2021. Hello, my name is Taylor Abbey, and today I'm gonna to be talking to you about why you should have your dog on heartworm prevention. That was yesterday's class session, which goes on for quite a while, really quality examples as we have seen today. What I want all of you to do is to obviously watch the videos as much as you can from front to back. Because all of these examples are available on my YouTube channel. They're also available on my website. But putting them in this compact package with my analyses in time can help you visualize what your topic is going to be, how you can set up your slides, how you can set up your loom, whether or not you want to use Slides Go, all of the takes that you record, choosing what you're going to provide to me and sending it to my Yahoo address. If you do it either by Loom or by YouTube, keep in mind, this is what you're going to find in terms of the overall look. Whenever anyone sends me a presentation on YouTube, and this is Matt going back to the fall semester of 2020, when you send something to me in this format on YouTube, that's what I'm going to see. If I scrolled through for anyone who sent me a loom, and this is Sam, that's what the link's going to look like. And keep in mind, we've already seen her presentation on the relevance of cartoons as a medium for quality animation. Whenever I do this, I scroll to the top and eventually you are going to find anything that you have provided for me. And let me indicate that I have leftover presentations with excuses. One is an informative speech on mental health issues, and the other is a demonstrative speech on CPR, which is cardiopulmonary resuscitation, that I will play at the end of class tomorrow, and that I will also make certain that you guys can check for yourselves on that particular course video. One more trip to my website. A lot of windows are open, so I have to be very careful not to X out of anything. We were looking at this at the beginning. There is the final persuasive speech video that we saw from Finley. And then when you go in reverse order, here at the website are audio, video, outlines. We spent a lot of time, of course, on that particular outline. And animal abuse is where you are going to begin. Now, my YouTube channel. Leaving no stone unturned for quality research. and examples of presentations. From my YouTube channel, here are examples of speeches 
on top, including the heartworm speech, including pursuing celebrity lifestyles. The best way to examine anything on my YouTube channel is to go to the broadcast and speech projects part of the playlist and scroll to spring 2020. From this area down, you're going to find why you should not procrastinate, talk to someone about your problems, cartoons, why animation is an important and useful medium, positive co-parenting, heartworm prevention for dogs, and pursuing celebrity lifestyles, all of which you saw in class yesterday, all of which are also available on the website. The final element of interactivity today is going to be the student preview mode on Blackboard. Today is the Baker's Dozen of 19 courses scheduled for the summer. If you're not sure what Baker's Dozen is, do a Google search. But it's going to be listed right here for you to watch at your leisure. Always double check on grades, which are available right here because that is going to be populating very quickly over the weekend. Three out of the four are going to be complete. We're talking about the self-evaluation speech critique on Monday of next week. But at the course syllabus, let's now just focus before wrapping things up with the course speech schedule. You can send anything to my Yahoo address or, as some of you have, to my SAU address. But make certain that we stay now that we're on the Monday through Thursday schedule of courses on that day one Wednesday or day two Thursday rotation. Very important that we stay on track as we wrap things up for today. A good persuasive speaker is going to be someone who understands that the world is not divided into black or white. There are multivariate shades of gray. And if you watch every last moment of every last class, you know that I've said that before, but it's true. Life is not hot takes. Life is trying to persuade someone while realizing they're just as smart as you, just as thoughtful. They just happen to have a different mindset. And you know what? That's okay. It's realistic. Whenever we're watching anything in the media, that's a skewed version of reality. It's not necessarily what we see in everyday life. It's entertaining, but it's, to a certain degree, frivolous entertainment. And you should view it as such. With all of these topics that we have seen, technically listed as persuasive speech research yesterday, and persuasive speech topic selection today, and what's available on my website and my YouTube channel. Really an outstanding variety, and those just scratch the surface of the hundreds and hundreds of speeches I've had in the 13 to 14 years that we have primarily been in interactive classrooms. So as you're aware, you are going to be my content creators with representative samples of what you do for each of the four major graded presentations, whether it be outlines or audio or video. They'll eventually wind up at some place on my social media imprint so individuals in the future can learn from you as you're learning from individuals. We are now six classes away from the end of the term. Let's make certain that we finish in style and that you submit what you think are the most appropriate elements of your improvement as a public speaker. We will continue with day one of persuasive speeches tomorrow. Good luck with your respective speech preparation processes as for SPCH 1113, Introduction to Public Speaking during the first summer session of 2022. That concludes the recording session for today.